Thank you for joining us on Off the Press. This is the program where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it. I will be joined uh, to review the papers this morning by Aisha Yesufu, virtually from Scotland. Good to have you, Aisha. Good morning. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's always good to have you. Uh, this morning we have a couple of papers. As always, I'll read out the headlines and then i hand over to you. We will begin with uh, the Punch newspaper um, and already displayed. It says, Explore equity financing, less debt, LCCI, tells the federal government. That story is on page 17 of the Punch newspaper. Overall education uh, minister on... Um, on West African Senior School Certificate Examination, Reps tell Buhari, that story is on page 8. Virtual court sitting not unconstitutional, Supreme Court rules on page 9. COVID-19 cut off 40% of our revenue, according to Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, on page 18 of the Punch newspaper. Now, big story for the Punch newspaper. 774,000 workers recruitment. National Assembly is set for hot session as Buhari backs Kayamo. That story is on page two. And if we go further down, now Labor Ministry opens a portal, job portal, invites applications from job seekers. Buhari t uh, telling Kayamo to shun federal legislation, legislators rather, is unfortunate according to Reps saying. We also have picture story there. Lagos Assembly fumigates complex members go for COVID-19 uh, tests. That's on page six. Reps to probe alleged 365 soldiers resignation on page two. Kwara State uh, sets up panel to probe local government funds on page nine. Ogun needs uh, 26 billion naira to complete Songo Agbado Highway on page 16. 26 billion naira. Now, missing Lagos nurse found in Oshun Hotel. 54-year-old pastor defiles girl, 10 in Ogun. Again, that sort of story. You can find that on pages 4 and 5. Ohanez, the IPOB settle rift. Modo dismisses a kind of threat. That story is on page 7 of the Punch newspaper. Uh, I want to take a look at those uh, images that are there closely. Uh, the picture story that we can see there, um, unfortunately, the characters are not quite clear. But anyways, I, Aisha, rather, have um, read out the headlines. Let's see which one is catching your attention this Wednesday morning. It's over to you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm okay, I'm looking for my trouble. You know that. <laughs> I mean, it's good to have a troublesome person in the station. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get it going. So when you went when, when you went I, I'm like thinking, oh, my mom, oh, is he calling me an I? No, I apologize. I is still a baby. So my mom, my father, my husband, they sometimes they call me I. Oh, okay. Uh, so, okay. <laughs> I'm looking at this now. Uh, the 774,000 workers recruitment. For me, that's the story that is really catching uh, my eye. And uh, it, it simply says uh, something, of course. The president will back uh, Teamu because why? He needs people to be occupied for the next three months. I mean, he's on the hot seat and he can see, and he's smart. One of the things where you, you, you find the president is smart as is ensuring that he's based in that power. And that's the reason why I always, so I always say that look, if Nigeria were to come out and actually make the man, the president will listen because he wants desperately to be in power. And so you have for 774,000 700, jobs are going to be created for three months, this is not even job. This is not a permanent thing. This is 20,000, 20,000 will be paid for three months. So in the next three months, people will be occupied, the youth, a lot of people will be occupied, scrambling over the job and not focus on the issue that there is a need for a real, for good governance in our nation. We, we are at the brink and we something needs to be done, not just uh, uh, short-term 
not just trying to find solutions that are not uh, really sustainable, but we need sustainable uh, solution uh, in the country. So for me, top of that, one of the things that is really grabbing my attention. Then the picture, of course, I would have loved to, I couldn't read the character here too. Yeah. I would have loved to be able to see what that picture was about. I wanted to find, is it a protest about something? Yeah, because please. it looks as if there's a barricade, we're on the road, we're stopping something. So it would have interesting to me because I would have loved to tie that out yeah. to what, what is happening with this with hundred and four thousand jobs. Yeah, unfortunately, the picture that you're referring to, yes, the characters are quite uh, not legible at all. We're trying also to take a look closely. Even from here, I'm trying to use the phone, but um, it's sad. We don't know what that's about, but I'm sure um, viewers who grab the hard copy would know what that's about. All right. Um, uh, th did you see the news, I that Ogun would need 26 billion naira to complete uh, Songo Agbado Highway? 26 billion naira. When it comes to Nigeria, billions aren't really anything. When it comes to government, they are speaking about these billions. I can you, it, it's part of what we hear, you know, of course, that you begin to wonder well, how much in the first place when this uh, contract was given, uh, how much was it? And, or repeatedly, you keep telling of these billions that are needed to complete projects that are needed to do something, and then you find out that these billions end up somewhere, somehow, they end up in the uh, inflated uh, contracts, they end up in the hands of cronies to, to government officials and their friends, and also back way. It, it, it's unbelievable. It just like what is going on with the NDC, I mean, the NDDC saga, uh, uh, corruption going on over there. Yes, as it's still part of the headlines we're going to come to you. You see, you see people, a lot of students abroad who are who are stranded. So it, it's just it's sad that we hear these figures and we have become no, normalized to hearing all of these figures where we don't see the result. We have also been joined by um, Akimbola Demola, who is the publisher for the Podium Media. He's joining us from the US. Good to have you, Mr. Ademola. Thank you. All right. Same here. Great. Nice to be here. Good morning. Good morning. And I, Aisha Yusufu is also on the line. She's joining virtually from Scotland. So we have the three of us now doing this. So we, we will proceed in the interest of time to... Hi, Aisha. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Hi. Great. So we'll proceed in the interest of time to other papers. Uh, we were talking, we were reviewing uh, the punch before you came online. Now we will go to the Nation newspaper. I read out the headlines and then invite both of you to make your um, comments. For the Nation newspaper, Lagos won't lament about doctor's strike, says Mr. Governor. That story is on page two and three of the Nation newspaper. And counseling the worst uh, main trigger criminality, says Afe Babalola uh, on page seven. Ondo PDP aspirants testify against Ajayi. Delegates list on the probe. Delegates list on the probe. That's on page five. Uh, Edo election protests in Edo over Obaseki's plan to take 20 billion naira loan. Sponsored protests can't distract voters, they say. That story is on page six. And then we have picture story. And from what I see, it's uh, travelers. I think it's with the airports being open. This is what it looks like. Kayamo gets Buhari's nod on 774,000 public works. And that's what we've got. And um, we have the COVID update. Uh, again, let me just quickly remind us the COVID update. We are now globally at 13.3 million confirmed cases, 578,000 deaths, uh, 7.8 recovered. And Nigeria is at today, we have 33,616 confirmed cases, 754 people have died from COVID-19, 13,792 recovered, but we have active cases of 19,070. All right, let me begin with you, uh, Demola, since you just joined us. We are talking, we are reviewing the Nation newspaper. So which story do you want to begin with? Which one is catching your attention? Aside from the 774,000 jobs, which we had already talked about, but of course you can go ahead if you've got some thoughts on that. Okay, let me start with the Lagos State story, the doctors um, going on strike and Lagos State government 
saying that uh, it won't lose any sleep. Mm. It's quite unfortunate in Nigeria we allow things to drag, we allow issues to get to a stage where they become crisis. I want to believe that the discussion didn't start today and at all times we just allow these things to just slip out of our hands. This is not the right time for doctors to go on strike for any reason at all, for any reason at all, uh, in the interest of public service. However, we are talking about frontline doctors, people who are risking their lives to save lives. And a government that knows what it's doing should have done everything possible to prevent the doctors going on strike. Pay them, whatever you agree with them, pay them, provide them PPE, do everything to make them comfortable. Okay? I've never heard of a similar incident happening in developed countries, doctors going on a strike in the midst of a pandemic. I think this is a law, okay, uh, concerning what Governor Sayolo has tried to do in Lagos State. This is not the time to, to allow our doctors to go on strike. Whatever it is that needs to be done should have been done. If it has not been done, it's time to do it, okay? I, 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 I stand with the doctors. Some folk may say, oh, they are greedy, oh, they are this, but hey, we are talking about doctors putting their lives on the line in order for others to be alive. What will it cost us? It's the same state, the same country that spends so much money on frivolities. Okay, we have money to purchase vehicles for national assembly members. We have money to waste on all other things, but we don't have money to pay doctors. I think this is not acceptable by any standard at all. Mm. Not acceptable. I also want to talk about the. Kayamo National Assembly face off. I think the president has done the right thing by coming out to back Kayamo. Uh, over the years, the National Assembly has attempted to arrogate more power than it actually um, has to itself. The condition is very clear. Oversight function is not the same thing as taking over the process of the project. Okay, And Kayamo was right to have said, look, you have the right to ask questions. You have no right to stop this project. And I was, I was listening to Aisha talking about the fact that, yes, it's just a few months project. It's not sustainable. I agree, but at the same time, we've got to start somewhere. We've got to start somewhere. There are some people, if they manage whatever they get from this project very well in three months, it's a lot of money to them. It may not mean much to us, but it means a lot of skies. After they be home doing nothing all this while. Okay, so yes, it is not... Um, where we want to be. It is not what we expect them to be doing, but we should commend them for doing something and try to encourage them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let me take Aisha's thoughts on uh, other headlines. Aisha, which one uh, do you want to talk about also from the Nation newspaper? Oh, okay, from the Nation's newspaper, I think uh, I'll still start with that Lagos uh, would lament about doctors' strike. I mean, Lagos State shouldn't be lamenting. They should be ashamed of themselves. That's, that's, that's the bottom line of it. And uh, we have people who are at the front, uh, born, uh, you know, uh, front line, you know, risking their lives for us. Nothing is, they are not being taken care of the way they should. If anything should happen to them, hey, it's Nigeria. Even good quality education wouldn't be guaranteed to their children. For those who have children, they will all be forgotten. And so it's, it's something that we, we uh, that they need to work on and, and get their ass together. If there's any state in, in Nigeria that should be able to adequately pay itself, it should be Lagos State. Uh, uh, of course, beyond the uh, the other Niger Delta state are getting so much money that you end you 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 wonder where all of this uh, money go to. The next thing, of course, I'm looking at is this canceling of, of Wayek. And I'm thinking where they say canceling of was uh, may trigger criminality. criminality. I would have loved to get how will it trigger a criminality. And there are other countries, uh, other places. For example, in the UK, part of the things they are trying to do is that they're using the predicted grades to, to grade yeah. the, the students. So you don't go and put children in the front line. We, 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 we are still having cases. We are still having new cases coming on. And we are thinking of carrying uh, students to go to school and write this exam. Here they need to write exams. Here they need to contribute. Can't we find other ways uh, to have that done? Then just a little bit uh, to uh, to talk about uh, this 774,000 jobs. If you want to give people palliatives, if you want to give people money, it's different. Yeah, there's COVID-19. A lot of countries, they are paying their, their people. They are going to be welfare. Give them, say, okay, you need 700 and some four people uh, uh, that you want to give 1,000 in every local government. to call it a job. 
put them through the process and then give them three months job. That's not sustainable. That's not, that's not what we're looking for. There are so many things that can be done to trigger uh, job creation. Uh, we have the end power. There's some of them are already kind of because they are being let go. You can't have people there and then you let them go. It's at the end of the day, it's gonna even be worse. Three months they are expecting what is gonna come out of there. In as much as we want to praise the government, we should ensure that we shouldn't give them a enabling environment to keep failing us. They are there to do a job and they should get it done. Mm -hmm. Because essentially you're saying three months after what happens. Right. Let, let, let's take a look at the, the Guardian newspaper. Uh, it would be displayed on the screen for you. And the big story for the Guardian newspaper. Local airlines risk collapse as a load factor declines. That seems to be their big story. Operators push for bailouts and open flights. 14-day quarantine threatens Nigeria's evasion and 35 orders. Senate amends law imposes life imprisonment on kidnappers. That story is on page three of the Guardian newspaper. Uh, Nigeria's, um, I can barely see that. I think one of Nigeria's, Itek Boje, I believe, emerges UN General Assembly special session interim president. That's good news for us. And um, Afer Babalola decries Nigeria's withdrawal from 2020 West African uh, Senior School Certificate Examination on page five of the Guardian newspaper. Echo has names ex-president Jonathan special envoy for Mali on page four. Also, we have the COVID-19 updates there. Why corruption and terrorism fester by federal government. That's something for you there on the front page. Uh, of the Guardian newspaper. Let me go to Demola there. Uh, there seem to be other issues raised by the Guardian newspaper. Uh, the law, the amendment of the law, uh, there's something on ECOWAS and us becoming a representative again at the UN. What's your thought? Okay, let me quickly just uh, weigh in on Ate Babalana's um, statement, which I was trying to talk about earlier on. Okay. I cannot put my hand on it. How would cancellation of work lead to criminality or rascality? Like my colleague said earlier on, in developed countries, students have been shielded, have been protected from <laughs> this pandemic. But in Nigeria, we love to argue virtually over everything, no matter how irrelevant it is. I stand by the federal government. Um, decision in Ireland, for instance, where I have my daughter, they are going to use predicted grades. Okay, school, nobody is going to school until September at the earliest. That is if it's going to work out. Nobody is writing any living start exam. It's all been cancelled. Mm. Okay, and here in Nigeria, Chikabala is talking about it's going to lead to rascality. How? I do not understand. Okay, so very important for us to know that what government has done is the right thing. Okay, if I were a parent with a, a, with a child in Nigeria, I won't allow my child to, 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 to go to school, not now, for any reason at all. Okay, then the, the Senate amending the law on, 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 on kidnapping, we need to be firm, we need to be decisive in Nigeria. There are some things that are non negotiable. Okay, over the years, we've seen how kidnapping has been an increase in Nigeria. Criminality has been an increase in Nigeria, but because we keep treating these things with big gloves, they keep coming back, they keep coming back to haunt us, they keep happening. Okay, so they've done very well. Let's look forward to a situation whereby laws will be enforced. Nigeria, we have the laws, but most of the laws are not enforced. Okay, so kidnapping is a serious issue, no, no matter how you want to rationalize or justify it, and it should be met with high level of punishment. Right. Yeah, I'll stop there. Okay. I, I shall like to get your thoughts on that same uh, subject matter. Uh, on, on the uh, amendment by the Senate. Yeah, it, 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 it's a welcome development. And I think uh, there is uh, another headline that added to it the fact that uh, rape has not been recognized in, in male. You know, in our laws before, it's only female that, that you know, that it's, uh, the law recognized can be raped. But now we have, which is, which is a welcome development because we've had a lot of. Uh, we don't really focus on the issue of male uh, rape. And then, uh, of course, uh, the, the the laws, beyond just having the laws, we have quite a number of the laws, it's implementation, and hopefully uh, we, we are able to, to work on that. Most especially the investigation, that's where the police now come in, because what we have a lot of time, 
the police are eager to uh, arrest people, arrest them. They don't work their investigative uh, 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 skills and ensure that they have enough evidence to be able to uh, prosecute. And you find out that when they go to court, everything just, their case just fall apart. Because the, whatever they get under uh, uh, confession, the person who just said it, it was gotten, confession was gotten under uh, due risk. But I'm okay, let me go to something that it's, for me, catching my attention very here, very well here, because as a, as a business owner, it affects me. Why corruption terrorism is tested by federal government? And this is where uh, the vice president uh, was making a statement. I remember in 2015, I think, February 2015, when the vice president was still the a candidate at, the, at a town hall meeting, that was one of the questions I, I asked him, what his government, if they, win, they were going to do uh, uh, about it. Because the thing is that a lot of businesses in Nigeria are acting as fronts. It is just for corruption. It is there for the absolute uh, need to, to clean money. And what these businesses do is that they take out genuine businesses. We are unable to compete with them. I talked about predatory pricing at that moment. And so you see that people have businesses as front. They are not genuine. They are being used to clean money. They can bring in goods or they manufacture goods. So they have goods. They can sell it at are less than cost price, which is predatory pricing. And at the end of the day, they take out other businesses who are genuine businesses, who are using clean money. And what happens? Jobs are lost. The economy suffers. So, and I've said it consistently that if we're going to fight corruption, we need to begin to look at a lot of business that are just from. You go to a shop, you see people selling certain things. You go to even where the, the, the rent of the place alone is running into millions. Yet the product the, the goods in the shop, they're not really anything. They're not selling much. And you're wondering, where are they getting the money to be able to hire those uh, places? So if Nigeria is going to be serious about fighting corruption, we need to begin to put our searchlight on, on, on businesses. All right. That's a good point you've made there. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Aisha, uh, for your thoughts. We, we are out of time, so to say, but we just very quickly take this day, uh, take the headlines, and I ask each of you, maybe <laughs> you share a, a minute, both of you, to make your thoughts. And this day, analysts, will UK courts allow a parent attempt to defraud Nigeria of $9.6 billion? Judgment reserved as briefcase company cites a desperation. Um, OPEC forecasts 25% rise in oil demand in 2021. Tension eases as Saudi Arabia speaks to Iraq and Nigeria. That story is also continued on page 9 of this day. Security agents mount a surveillance on EFCC headquarters and offices. Uh, and then we have the picture story there of uh, the vice president sustaining the fight against graft. Vice president there. Um, addressing the 20th anniversary of Africa Regional Webinar, I believe. And then finally, we have virtual court sitting, not unconstitutional, Supreme Court rules on page five. I'll just quickly say we have two minutes, uh, one minute each for you. So let's begin with Demola. What's your thoughts on any of these uh, headlines from this day? Okay, quickly, I'll talk about the um, security agents mounting the um, vigil on, on, on EFCC. It's just unfortunate um, what is happening in EFCC. Uh, I am for thorough investigation. It's good. Whoever is in charge of anti-corruption must not be found uh, on the fringes of corruption by, 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 by any standard. So it's good. But we need to do things properly. Right from day one, that, my, that, that this fellow was practically bundled on the street of Abuja, we are not doing things properly. Let's yeah. fight corruption in a structured way, in a legal way, in a way that encourages others who want to serve the country. All right. I, I believe that until the report is fully out, yeah. Right. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm cutting you short, but let me hear Aisha yeah. very quickly. So. <laughs> That's fine. I, I would have finished helping have to uh, continue. But of course, uh, like what he's saying, uh, we, we, we focus more on optics rather than on substance. So the show, man, she sort of actually does anything that got a lot of investigation, bring out uh, evidence against him and before doing all of this uh, drama. Mm -hmm. But let's look at, you know, when they talk about the UK court, will the UK court allow uh, apparent attempt to be put in Europe? I'm going to million uh, dollars. I think Nigerians, we just think uh, we do our normal way of doing things anyhow. 
will get us to, to, to where we, we want to be. Uh, but I, I'm not going to be running out of time. There's one thing I just want to quickly touch on. That's a story where they said that the e-commerce, I mean, it's going down in Nigeria, which is such, Nigeria is such a, a country that it's full of uh, riddles. I, I don't, the paradox, let me put it that way, where this is a time that e-commerce is thriving. But unfortunately, in Nigeria, the reverse is the case. That's quite I hope we get our ass together. That's just all I can say. All right. I hope we get our ass together. That's a good way to wrap it. I want to say thank you to Aisha Yesufu, co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls, for being with me this morning. And of course, Demola uh, Akimbola, who is the publisher of the Podium Media, who joined us this morning from the U.S. It's good to have you both. Uh, thank you very much, Demola. And you Thank both, you. all right, and you both keep safe out there. We will do this, yeah, again. The time is 8.30 a.m. here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okoye reminding you to always keep safe out there.